Hello, this is a take three this morning, and it might be a take four because Maisie refused to come in, and I bet you she'll want to come in as soon as I start. So we're on to the... I was thinking, it feels like I'm going clockwise around my face, doesn't it? Well, starting in the middle. Although I went to the mouth, didn't I? No, I did the eye next, and then the mouth, and now I'm going up to the other eye, I reckon. Well, we'll see. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, to be honest. But the light is nice on that eye there now this morning, so I think I will. I will start with that. I've been running. Would you believe that? If you said to me in January would I, that I'd be running, I would have laughed in your face. I've started running, so in the morning, instead of taking Maisie for a walk, I just take her, I go for a, a wee run around the field. And yesterday I stayed going the whole time, like which felt really good for myself. Because I've been running with a neighbour who's, I think, far, um, far more of a natural runner than I am. And, uh, and I hadn't been keeping up with her, you know. She'd be, she'd stop and wait for me. And we're going for a run tonight. But I was pleased with myself for being able to stay going, you know, all the time. We were on the field yesterday because the day before I had stopped maybe twice or just gone really slowly you know I mean I did still go really slowly um yesterday but um this heater isn't yeah that's better it wasn't hot uh, but I kept going like I kept going all the way around and I felt good I think once you get your breathing sorted, oh, that's annoying because it's pulling away from the ear the whole time. Let's push it up and lift. The iPad is just covering the left side of my face, so I'm kind of having to lean to the right a little bit. see this eye. I think what I'll do is I'll begin with some soft green and cadmium red and just kind of identify where the eye is located in relation to say the eyebrow on the other side it kind of hits there there's a corner there maybe it's a touch higher than that yeah, like there maybe. And then there's another bend. About there, yeah. And then my iris would sit about, um, kind of, the iris would sit about there, below the like slightly to the right of the bend in the eyebrow and maybe about there I feel like I need to lift the eye a little bit more it's kind of tricky when you're um, painting your own face because it's not possible to close one eye and consider and also when you're looking at one eye the other eye is still looking straight at that one so there's a danger that your eyes might look like they're looking at both of them out the way which is an unusual phenomenon kind of disturbing <laughs> I did a painting for um, the artist and illustrator a few years ago a self-portrait like this and it was on the cover of the art artist and illustrator actually and somebody wrote to me and said do you not know that you're supposed to like um, you're supposed to consider the fact that you're looking at both of your eyes when you're painting them that you're looking at you know both of your eyes are looking at one eye as you're painting them so you need to kind of compensate for the position of them and make them read as being closer together than you actually see them and uh, I think I 
I was just irritated. The person pointed it out. But when I looked, I thought, actually, true enough. My eyes looked as though they were both looking out the way. Left and right. No, Maisie's barking. I think she's wanting to actually go into the house rather than come into me. So that was a... Uh, better than barking at this door. And I'll not be... I'll not be ages at this now again. Yeah, looking at the image on the screen, it looks as though this eye is too far over to the left, but I think it's just because of those dots and shadows and bits and pieces, and that when I get to finding where it is in relation to the nose, that we'll be okay. You know, sometimes shapes can pull it that way. And uh, I would see the corner of the eyes being about there, and then there's the bit, the flap of skin overlapping. It's kind of the Irish, I think. We'll see. I like to just kind of indicate things without fully committing to them, but indicating strongly enough, like, you know, like that's quite a dark shade there. Indicating it strongly enough so that I can lean back, stand back and consider whether it reads happily with the rest or not because if you only tentatively put something in there you're you're not going to really be able to clearly identify it when you when you lean back and you want to be able to see it in order to know whether it sits right and when I say see it I mean like you know significantly be able to see it um so the the pupil there it could do with being a touch darker on the left in order for me to really discern whether I've got the eye in the place where I want it to be and I do think I need to compensate a little bit and bring it in a little bit more to read like I was talking about there to read more um, successfully with the other eye it's going to be too much now I mean, she could always come in here. I'd open the door for her if she came over here. I don't know if you can hear me either. there. Moving down to the quarter inch brush now because I want to explain the shadow that comes up to meet the upper surface of the lower lid there. So I'm mixing some cerulean blue with some quinacridi magenta. Pushing and lifting. Because I want to say, okay, this is where the skin below the eye stops and the where it kind of starts. Where the, surf, the upper surface of the lower lid starts. It's all... It's all pretty dark in there, to be honest. But it's kind of a warm dark in places, like here. And it's a cooler dark in other places, like in the white of the eye. And finding the position is important before putting in too much colour as well. Like. But I want to identify again the pupil and see whether it's sitting comfortably there now. Oh, Maisie. 
So I've mixed ultramarine blue and verdian green with the alizarin crimson that was there. Did you see that? Can't really see what you're seeing. There, that's the pupil color for me now. At least the tone of the pupil on anyway. And actually there's some dark here too that could be injected while it's still wet enough. in relation to the other side like this side is quite dark when you press the bristles against the paper it releases the pigment Sometimes I put it in a colour that's not there at all, but I feel like it needs it, or there's there's some part of it that's there. It might be a very vague, warm hint or something, and I, and I put in something with that level of tone, because it just feels like it's needed somehow, you know? Sometimes it feels like a colour is needed when it might not be at all as evident in the, in the stimulus, whatever it is you're painting. Um, hmm. And then along here, I wanted to mix the quinacridine gold with the quinacridine magenta. Because there's something fresh about those colours that um, I like for explaining the warm side of the face that's um, facing the light there. Right, it sounds like Maisie's doing some damage in the garden now. Maybe she's jumped onto the swinging seat. That's probably what she's done. Oh no, that's just it. Oh, do you know what it is? We put out some things because we, <clears throat> we did a big spring clean and Lily's boyfriend and his pal last night moved all the, like the old sofa, which we've had for 15 years or something ridiculous. And it was second hand then. The old sofa, Lily's childhood bed, Day, a day bed for um, small children so she's her bed is out and the council are uplifting all of that stuff with um, dining room chairs again that we inherited and there was another thing 
I forget what the last thing is. You're allowed to put out seven, seven items for 27 pounds. And these were all items that really, I think they had done, I feel like there was no, no more use for them in anyone's house, like, you know, because um, anyway, so they're, they're being uplifted at the moment and the council will take them to, I hope recycle in some way. You know, there's a lot of wood in that bed. It's good to have um, them out of the way anyway. They're very quick to come, actually. I only phoned last week. <coughs> Lazy! And they were also... Um, I forget what I was going to say. Yeah, it's early enough in the morning for them to come as well. We had to have the stuff out by 6 a.m. No, 6.30 a.m. And it's now just after 8, so... It's not been sitting there that long. Because you wouldn't want to be obstructing the... I'd be kind of embarrassed to be obstructing the footpath, you know? For the neighbours going to school and things. to have the old clear out though and we finally got our corner sofa second hand but it's like new we went to later with it came from three floors up so it was quite an epic um, move but it's there and our new washing machine is installed and our new toilet seat is installed. So those are the three things that, the three things that were uh, our challenge to sort out. <coughs> For goodness sake. Do you know one of, the, one of the things too? Like it's good sorting things out and it's also good celebrating that they've been sorted. And like things like me, my health as well. Like I was fierce sick there at the start of the year. Oh, Maisie, at the start of the year I was very sick, you know, I could do nothing. And here I am now, full of it, full of the joys, you know, all set for my flower painting again and teaching the online courses again and up every morning doing something here. And I also have issues still to sort out. So that, that was a preamble for the issues. And the thing is, I have a tendency to stay up fierce late watching stuff on RTE iPlayer now. And uh, and eating when I'm not really hungry, and finding like trying to find stuff like um hot chocolate bombs. I had a hot chocolate bomb <laughs> inside in milk last night. It was quite nice actually, but you know I I have no interest in that kind of thing in the daytime. Like it seems to be just because I'm bored or I want um it's like a reward for the busyness of the day. No, I enjoy all this kind of stuff, so it doesn't feel as though this is a taxing thing to be doing. But there's some rebellious streak in me that wants to know that I've, that I've, um, you know, had some sensuous pleasure out of the day, like, or something. As the day comes to a close, I feel like I want to enjoy some time out, like. I suppose the thing, too, is that I'm switched on, you know, a fair bit regarding my work. Like, I like to communicate with people and... I end up sometimes doing that into the night, like in the evening time, arranging stuff and that, which is great. Like, I feel like it's really brilliant that I can choose to go out during the day for a run and then do an hour in the evening instead. And, do you know, there's there's a lot of benefits to it. But one of the things that is that I feel like I'm working until, say, 10 o'clock sometimes. And then it's kind of a natural instinct, isn't it, after work to feel like you want downtime. So... There's a few things there now. And I also don't tend to eat early in the day. I don't eat sometimes until two or three o'clock and maybe it's just that. Is it circadian rhythm or whatever needs to change? Like my my way of my way of my you know, eating patterns could do with linking up with my activity. 
And for a long time there, I did, um, it was intermittent fasting, I suppose, but I would stop eating at eight o'clock and there was no question of having anything else. It wasn't on my radar at all. Like, I had other things that I would do, like um, read. And I don't think I tended to really watch television. I think that watching television and um, eating seemed for me at the moment to go hand in hand. So I suppose I might need to, um, I don't know, I could get some like herb tea and uh, drink that instead. I don't know if this eye is leaning too much to the left there now. I'm looking into making a Patreon account. If any of you are um, subscribers to any, excuse me, any Patreon accounts, let me know because I'm interested in the whole thing. I love communicating here, and I feel like that would be a way for me to. That would be a way for me to have discipline around it, to make sure that I had content happening all the time, content. But you know what I mean. To have a reason to create for example a series of a series of um lessons say on painting a self-portrait going from the setup and having some written exercises like, like things to look out for so i would send an email or send a message to the people signed up and um find ways to make the membership work for folks so that it's different from what happens on YouTube and there's a bit more personal interaction because I love the personal interaction part of things and I'd like it to be a bit more widespread like I do a lot of one to one and I love that but I also would love to have some something where I communicate with a group of people without having to be completely um, you know without being um, one to one interacting every day you know, to have something that's uh, a little bit less time commitment for me, but really satisfying. And all the information will be available to do something from start to finish for people signed up. And I have a fair few, I suppose the thing is too, I could, I could have like bonuses, like a question and answer session or something, or a live, live Zoom call where I paint. Only for the members, I would paint in front of the camera and then be open to questions after or something. I'm thinking out loud, and to be honest with you, you see, I'm kind of wanting to make, take some action every day on it. And so telling you it is a simple way of taking action on it today. Because I don't like hitting the bed at night and thinking, oh, sugar, I did nothing about that. Because my intention was to do something towards it every single day no matter how small and I have started you've got a pic profile picture for it and I, um, I've set things up like so that it could go live now but um, I'm wanting to finish off the description properly and name it properly and everything when I say properly choose a name that I feel inspired by and that refle reflects what I want to pass on through having a Patreon account Patreon account. I don't know where I heard this song, but it's going over and over in my head. Take me and make me an island, and I'm yours. An island. Oh, yeah. It was on the iPlayer last night. Gay Byrne. There's like, um, I don't know if you know Gay Byrne. The Late Late Show was a program that I used to watch growing up. I think there's different people. Oh, oh jeepers, sorry. Oh, my goodness. There are different people um, hosting it now. But... 
on the eye player. The, the RTE eye player is um, has got Irish programs on it. I don't know how I'm able to get it here, but I am. It's got Irish programs on it, and I watch the um, uh, kind of latest, mo- um, greatest moments from the late late show over the years, kind of thing. And that guy was singing. Make me an island, I'm yours. I forget his name, Colm something, I think. But it's a very familiar song to me. So my dad, my mum and dad must have listened to it when I was growing up. We had a few albums, we had a few records growing up. One of them was Sounds Like the Eagles. It was very good. It didn't matter there were sounds like. It felt like it was like the same, like the ABBA tribute band that I went to a couple of years ago in the Playhouse. They sounded exactly like ABBA to me. And they looked exactly like them. No holograms or holograms or anything. It was just fantastic. And in the middle they played a John Bon Jovi number. It was great fun. So the Eagles sounded like, um, they really did sound like the Eagles. And then there was Makem and Clancy. My party piece for years was the 200-year-old alcoholic. And the nicotine is California. The worst old in this morning's mail. I got a suit for paternity. And the chorus is, it's never too late to start living. To get up and have some fun The sun will be just as shiny in the morning As the first day the world begun I love that song Another one was Don't Fence Me In That's not Make and Clancy as far as I know But there were some songs that um, used to be kind of Party pieces growing up And actually the fairy tale in New York I used to sing with my friend Andrew From my friend Connor I used to be Kirsty McCall and be her. Mm. What am I doing here now? Singing is great crack, isn't it? Like to have a, a bit of an old sing song. I bought my accordion back last time I was in Ireland, and I think I might um see about going to a session sometime I can play a few reels and jigs and waltzes and marches and that kind of carry on but um, it's fairly basic like I learned when I was 8 until I was about 12 my mother used to drive us every Wednesday night to Inishannon Inishannon Village Hall and then I used to go in it was an hour long and every time I would need to go to the toilet as soon as I got into the room nearly. No matter how, how many times I went before. And I remember feeling like every week, oh my God, am I going to be able to hold on to it this week? It's you know one of those things that happens when you're a child that seems to take over everything. And there was a fairly big crowd of folk there like learning the accordion. So I found it impossible to stand up and say I need to go to the toilet. That would have been worse than peeing my pants. Imagine pressure of it like anyway I'm glad I've got the um, I'm glad I do have I'm glad I have the accordion now it's great it's a good old push pull kind of instrument you can make a lot of noise with it there's something simple about it too it's a little bit like running you can just hop up off you go there's no big Preparation in advance, open the box, play a few tunes. Having said that, I haven't played a few tunes since I came back, really, once or twice, but not consistently. Consistently. So maybe that's something that could take over from eating at night time. The neighbours would be delighted. A bit of noise. I was thinking to crochet, something to keep my hands occupied while I watch telly. If I want to watch telly, like I don't want to be being fierce restrictive on myself and stopping myself from doing the things that make me wind down like but I don't want to be staying up until 2am watching stuff eating chocolate either or 
hot chocolate. It was quite a good thing. Like it's a, a ball of chocolate about the size of a golf ball or a bit bigger. Between the size of a golf ball and a tennis ball. And inside is, um, you know, about 15 marshmallows inside in each one. And you pour hot milk over the top of it. Put it in a cup and hold, pour hot milk over the top of it and it opens and the marshmallows come out. And then you just stir and stir and stir and uh, until all the chocolate's melted and you've got that. It's really nice, hot chocolate. I was thinking it's a gimmick, you know, but actually it works. We only had oat milk, so that's what I had in mine last night and it was really nice. My sister, who's a dairy farmer, says, um, don't call it oat milk. It's oat, oat drink. Anyway, whatever it is, it was nice with the hot chocolate. I'm heading to Ireland next Thursday. So today's Thursday, yeah, a week today. I'm heading over for a week. Really looking forward to that. I'm going to go to the Mallard Hotel. In, in a Gorty, I think it is, for two nights, myself and my mum and my two, three sisters. And I can't wait. This really is, it's not really centred, is it? Make me an island and you. That her, um, you know, she'd kill me for saying this now, but I suppose none of you will actually interact with Lily today, so I can say it. And hopefully, we'll have good news. She's got her theory test today. I'm taking her into Edinburgh, and hopefully, she'll pass it. She's desperate to learn to drive, like, she's been getting lessons for driving for a while, and um. And lessons for driving for a while and just needs to pass her theory test now and I'd say that she's brilliant at the practical like but there's a sticky and awful thing the theory test I remember I didn't pass the first time Erin did but we'll see how she gets on now it'd be great if it'd be great if she gets it because it will get the next step moving she doesn't want to book her practical test obviously until she's passed her theory when Erin did hers. She's 20. When she did hers, we had to go to Berwick-on-Tweed in order for her to get a theory test. That was the only place they were available. So it was lucky that she did pass the first thing because that's quite a long old trek. A couple of hours. Mind you, we had a good old day of it. We went for a swim at Coldingham Beach and had um, pancakes and a cafe after. Just trying to lift this a little bit. Just, uh, I'd say the iPad is overheating now with the you can hear the heater underneath it, but honestly it was so cold I was finding it really, really chilly in here. It didn't stop me painting actually. It maybe made me feel like I can be a bit more impulsive about it and just get the job done each each morning. This is a bit of a tick tick box thing for me, but it's fantastic because it makes me feel like I've achieved something early on in the day. And that there's a lot to be said for that. Feeling like you're you're already on the. I feel like I'm already. <clears throat> I'm already on the up and up. I read yesterday, you know, James Clear. I often talk about James Clear's newsletters. He's really inspiring. Um. I think it. I think it's. It's the. The quote is that it's more, more wisdom per word than any other newsletter on the web. I don't know who said that. Anyway, it's very good. And what was I going to say about him? He often talks about consistent practice. It wasn't about that, though. What was I going to say? It was something I read yesterday in his newsletter that came out recently. 
it'll come back to me if it's um I forget what I was even talking about like I was talking about the consistent right and just showing up and doing stuff oh yeah he said that um if you want to have a successful day a simple way to have a good day or something like that a simple way to have a productive or a successful day I mean fuck it I don't know what you call successful you know in all fairness a successful day might be simply getting out of bed or staying in bed um I was going to say, but anyway, he didn't phrase it like that. It was anyway. I'm just going to tell you. Um, before lunch, do some sort of workout and accomplish the thing that you're planning on doing that day. Accomplish it before lunch, best you can. You know, if there's something pressing that you need to do, tackle tackle that before lunch. So once that's done and the the run is done. You're on a you're on a roll. You can you can kind of. I mean, you should be able to feel good about yourself anyway, shouldn't you? It's a bit annoying sometimes when I think that I have to kind of produce or make or do something, but then a life thing can go by without anything happening. That's what I find too, and I love getting my teeth into things like this, for example. So. I do think there's room for ritual, room for habit stacking. And <clears throat> I haven't said that word in a long time, so I'll explain it. And for those of you who haven't heard me talk about this before, I'm kind of could be very irritating to people know the way I'm talking, I know. It would have been irritating to me, depending on the day. But anyway, today I'm going to tell you about habit stacking. When I get up in the morning, I'm automatically, you know, um, I automatically get the yoga mat out. That's the first thing I do. And I know I feel good after doing yoga, so it's not too much of a taxing thing for me to get out of bed. And I already have a routine established where that's the first thing I do, so there's no decision-making around it. Roll out the mat, turn on Yoga with Adrian on YouTube, and just select one, depending on how I'm feeling. It might be a five-minute one. More often, it's 15 or 20 minutes, and occasionally it'll be half an hour. And I just do a yoga routine. And then I sit for 25 minutes an hour. I sit for 20 minutes. And I realised I actually really like this. Just sitting there with closed eyes, listening to the birds, listening to whatever sounds, my own breath. Maisie sitting beside me. And um, and uh, I realised I want, I want to do this for longer. So I said it for 25 minutes the last couple of days. And I get a fright when the alarm goes off. But it's a lovely thing to sit with myself like that, you know. Not planning anything or a bit, just sitting. And uh, the next thing then is this. I come out here. Now after this, I've got my... The next stack... Like, I've stacked the running on top of this. So I'll take Maisie out for a run in the field. Um, as the next thing. And sometimes after that, I feel like a bit of a lost soul. Like, what am I, what am I supposed to do now? It's weird, isn't it? Like you start making yourself do regular things and then suddenly you're like oh let's see if there's nothing in place as the next thing and I used to hate the idea of scheduling everything, like, there are people who schedule everything, some like famous coaches famously even schedule in being intimate with their partner you know for like two hours on this night or whatever it is so I just feel like Aye, that's the whole, the whole thing of scheduling every moment of your living gives no room for and even they might they might say yeah but I schedule in the fallow periods as well the schedule in the daydream but fuck it like surely be to God daydreaming can happen without it having to be scheduled in but I can identify with that sense of being all at sea when there is nothing I suppose actually after what helps me too early on in the day and I write this in my diary at the end of the day Remember to journal, to write out, you know, to just write a few pages early in the morning. And when I do that, I can kind of sort out what it is that really is a priority for me that day. And sometimes I'll write something inspiring. Like today when I was doing yoga, gentle and steady were the two words that came to me. So they're kind of my words now for today. For today. <sighs> Anyway, sure, I'm telling you, just no harm. 
I still have this sense that nobody actually listens to the whole lot of these videos, so it's, ju it's just a way for me to almost do that same thing as journaling would and do a bit of a brain dump. Maybe it's that, that's the danger of the internet, isn't it? Because you, you kind of think that your words have no impact. I mean, when people are really harsh with other folk, it's that idea too. But I quite like the idea of anonymously, or just, um, no, I'm not anonymous, am I? Here I am painting my own face. But you know, kind of um, having a, a place where I can just chat away. I did a creative writing course for well-being at one point and we were given exercises. One of them I still do is like write out three things at the end of the day that you're happy with and even maybe do a drawing of one of them. Simple drawing, but it kind of embeds it. Three things that you're thankful for, grateful for. One of the other things that we did was, um, what was one of the other things that we did? Play a brain dump. If you're worrying about something, just uh, get it all out on paper. Just write it out. And that way, at least, it's kind of separate from you. It's not like you're actually physically doing anything about it, but you're stopping it going round and round in your head if that's what's happening. And different days, different things worked as well, I found. It's quite an unusual jaw there. I don't think it's that far away. So it's quite dark back there where my hair is and the black background, the dark background. And in contrast, the light is really bright on my ear and my cheek. I do that again and turn it on its side and then inside the page. And I've got a Zoom call this morning that I'm looking forward to. Talk, talking to my friend about her artwork. <clears throat> a little chat every so often. I just wanted to show you what I did there. I can't really see. Mm. Over my ear though. I just pushed like this, pushed and lifted at the edge of the face and just let the runs go in that direction. <clears throat> Don't think that's necessary, is it? Make me an island and you I want to say Colum C.T. Wilkinson, but it's not, is it? Someone else whose name sounds a bit like that, though. I need to look it up now after, the, after this. Um, now that I've painted some darks on that side, the ear seems really vacant, doesn't it? I'm going to put a little stop to it. There. Bit trigger happy with that old uh, magenta. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I mean, there's more, more things to do, but that's what happened today. I think you're close enough. You don't really need me to do this every morning, do you? There, um, thanks for being with me. Oh. And also by yanking it about, I'm in danger of dropping that. I'm in danger of letting that drop fly away from the nose there and I want it to stay there because I quite like the pendulum of that of that magenta sitting there. Goodbye. 44, 44.